Are you thinking about investing in real estate in Canada? In this video, you're gonna learn about the nine best real estate investment options in Canada. Canadians love investing in real estate. To give you a perspective of how popular investing in real estate has become, here is an interesting statistic and I found this in a report by JLL. Canadian investors and foreign buyers spent $34 billion on buying land and entry level acquisitions in 2018, which is a staggering amount. So let's go over the different options of what I think are the most common and best options of real estate investing in Canada. Number one is the principal residence property investment. The first and arguably the most important method for real estate investing in Canada is the principal residence property investment. Purchasing a principal residence, otherwise known as a primary residence, is a long-standing approach to investing in real estate and it's a common dream for many Canadians. When you purchase a residential property, its status as a principal residence is a crucial tool for you in terms of financial planning. The Canada Revenue Agency allows you tax exemption from any profits you earn by selling a principal residence. This exemption is crucial when it comes to real estate investing in Canada. All properties that you own are subject to tax when they increase in value. This value appreciation is called a capital gain and any asset that grows in value is subject to a 50% capital gains tax normally. When you sell a property, you are liable to pay capital gains tax on half of the profit that you earn from selling it, which is where you get the 50% from. If you are selling a principal property, however, the CRA provides you with a complete exemption on all these capital gains tax that you would otherwise owe on selling your main property. So it's a fantastic exemption that they provided. Number two option is to buy and hold. Another traditional method of real estate investing in Canada is to create a buy and hold strategy. There's several ways that you can accomplish a successful way to generate income from your real estate by buying and holding onto your property. The first way is you can buy and live in the house or apartment, then sell it later. The second way is you can purchase a single family home and rent it out to a family. The third way is you can purchase a multifamily home, live in one of the units, and then rent out the rest. And the fourth way is you can purchase a multifamily home and rent out all of the units. By successfully buying and holding, this could help you generate significant income from your property through the rent, and it can help you eventually cover the mortgage costs and earn a profit when you eventually sell it. The longer you hold onto the property, the more potential appreciation you can enjoy on the property value. The third way is residential rental income. An excellent way to use real estate investing in Canada is to purchase a residential property and then rent it out. The income you earn can go towards paying off the mortgage on the property and adding more cash flow for you to use. Remember that owning residential real estate though can be hard work. It is an active investment and you'll need to be involved in the affairs of your property with a much more hands-on approach than say something like stocks. Most people tend to manage residential rental properties themselves, but if you don't wanna play the role of an active landlord, you can hire a property manager to deal with the tenants, look after the property for you and ensure you get the rent on time. Make sure your residential rental property is producing enough cash flow that you have enough left over after paying the expense of hiring a property manager. Residential rental income can be a source of substantial income for real estate investors. According to Global Property Guide, you can earn a gross rental return of over 4.5% for apartments in Montreal, and it's closer to around three or 4% for markets like Toronto and Vancouver currently. Number four is commercial rental income. This type of rental income is an uncommon method for individual investors to generate income through real estate investing in Canada. Commercial properties can include anything from office buildings to shopping malls and everything in between. Commercial real estate properties allow businesses to operate on the property to generate income. Owners of the property can earn significant income through the rent from their tenants. The earning potential for commercial property is huge. The average asking rent for office space in downtown Toronto is around $38 to $40 per square feet. And it's among the most expensive markets in the whole country. 
Of course, you need to consider that commercial real estate is also an active investment. You need to be hands-on with managing the property and dealing with tenants. Depending on the type of commercial property you own, the intricacies of handling the management of the property can also differ drastically. Between the exorbitant upfront capital needed to purchase commercial rental property and the complexities of managing it, many people probably are not going to purchase commercial property ever in their lives. A much more realistic way to get entry into these commercial real estate is through REITs or REIT ETFs, which I'll discuss later on on this list. The fifth way of earning income from properties is by flipping properties. By flipping properties, if done right, can help you make substantial profits. It's a remarkable method of real estate investing income in Canada, and it's one that many investors have found success in. The idea behind flipping properties is that you need to buy a property that has some work done to it usually. The property needs to have significant potential to increase in value if you renovate it. If you can find a residential property that needs fixing up and renovate it quickly, you can sell it for a handsome profit. While it might seem like a straightforward deal to buy houses, fix them up, and sell them for a profit, house flipping does not always pay off, and it is very risky. You can run into a wide range of issues. You must know what you're getting into before you decide to go with this strategy. Buying just any property because it needs fixing up will not work. To increase your success in property flipping, you need to look for properties that requires some cosmetic upgrades, but not m major faults like having a leaky basement or structural defects. Before you invest in any such property with the intent of flipping it, you should talk to a realtor and make sure you'll be able to resell the property for the amount you were looking for. If the house fits the bill, you need to calculate the cost of renovations and compare it to the final price once it's ready to sell. If it gives you the opportunity to turn into a significant profit, it's worth the investment. Number six is to Airbnb your property. You don't necessarily need to take the traditional approach when it comes to renting out residential property. Long-term rental websites like Airbnb allow you to rent out a space to help you earn some extra cash. You don't even need to rent out an entire home to earn some money off of the Airbnb platform. The short-term rental website allows you to rent out a spare bedroom in your residence to earn out some extra cash. You need to make sure that you consult any municipal bylaws and condo board rules wherever applicable before you rent out your place on a short-term rental through Airbnb though. There's a lot of increasing restrictions on Airbnb regulations for many reasons. According to the Globe and Mail, Airbnb recently applied a limit to book Airbnbs to young Canadians after an unfortunate incident in Toronto. So it's best to be entirely aware of any regulations to make sure you're complying with all the laws. You'll also want to keep a close eye on your property since short-term tenants don't typically always take good care of the property as much as long-term tenants usually do. The seventh way is land rental income. You could use vacant land to earn a rental income. If you own vacant land, you can rent it out to any interested parties who may want to use the land for a variety of reasons. The most common source of land rental income is through renting it out to farmers. As the farmland tenants, they will pay you the rent on a monthly or annual basis so they can generate revenue. Owning vacant land and using it for rental purposes can be beneficial for you even when you have no active tenants. If you're not earning rental income from the vacant land, the CRA will consider your costs for maintaining the property as capital expenditures. It means that your expenses for maintaining the land, if any, can be added to the original cost of the property on sale. For more detailed information on taxes for a vacant land, you could read the information on the CRA's website. So the eighth way to get access to real estate in Canada is through REIT stocks. Real estate investment trust stocks are a fantastic method for you to capitalize on real estate investing in Canada. REITs are companies that own and operate income generating properties. A REIT can own a large portfolio of properties that can include commercial properties such as offices, apartments, hospitals, shopping centers, and even residential properties. You can buy and sell shares of publicly traded REITs listed on the stock exchange through an online broker or a trading platform or through a big bank. Buying shares of a REIT offers you exposure to the real estate market without the hassle of a hands-on approach. And it makes the real estate investing much more accessible. Plus it provides you with payouts through dividends, which it, they are all mandated to pay. The ninth way to invest in real estate in Canada is through REIT ETFs. 
So it is ideal to invest in a REIT that has a track record for stable prices and a history of reliably dispersing payouts to its shareholders. The REIT industry has been around for more than 25 years. From five REITs in Canada that were listed in 1996, there are now over 40 REITs traded on the Toronto Stock Exchange. The industry is increasing in popularity due to the ease REITs provide Canadian investors interested in the real estate sector. Because there's so many REITs now, REIT ETFs provide you the option of investing in a diversified portfolio of several REITs. So it's basically an ETF of many REITs. It's a passive investment that consists of shares of the top Canadian REITs. You don't need to go through the hassle of choosing a specific REIT. By owning an ETF, it automatically gives you diversification over several types of real estate properties, such as residential properties, retail, office, apartments, industrials, and much more. Diversification in your investment portfolio can result in lower risk to your capital. It's an option that conservative investors can consider and real estate investment trusts and REOCs raised over $6.5 billion in 2018. So in this section, I'm going to be talking about argument for real estate investing versus investing in stocks or equities. So it's a timeless question. Should I invest in stocks or should I invest in real estate? Real estate is more emotional and it's more tangible. People can fall in love with the property, but you know, it's very hard to fall in love with a stock. And I want to point out historically stocks have outperformed real estate in the long run, but it's hard to see this as real estate gets a lot more of the headlines in Canada and the past decade has seen explosive growth in key markets like Vancouver and Toronto. The main argument for real estate though is leverage, but Leverage can be a double-edged sword because you're borrowing money, investing it all in one asset. You're not only accelerating your potential gains, but your potential losses also. So you could look at anyone in Calgary or Edmonton that's invested in the last five years and they're going through this problem. My personal opinion is there is room for both real estate and stocks in your portfolio. I own property and stocks and ETFs as part of my diversification strategy for my portfolio. The downsides of real estate are it is time intensive and can have lots of research and planning involved, but the rewards can be well worth it. All right, guys, if you enjoyed the video, make sure you like and subscribe to the channel. I'll be putting out new content every single week and be sure to check out the wealthawesome.com blog. I talk about this topic in way more detail on the blog, plus other topics you might be interested in that apply to personal finance for Canadians. So as always, thanks for listening.